beautiful world. I'm Heather McElhatton, and this is A Beautiful World. So the Gita is an ancient text that is considered by many to be one of the most uh, renowned uh, guides for uh, meditation, inner development, and happiness. Isaac Bentwich is a medical doctor by training. He lives in Israel and currently works as the head of innovation at the Technion, Israel's leading university of technology. But he's also a philosophical man, inspired by the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita, or Gita, as he's titled his new translation of this ancient Sanskrit text. Nobody really knows who wrote it, you know, like the Bible or the Quran eh, or other significant scriptures. This is a dialogue between eh, disciple and master. Bentwich spent 12 years transcribing the text, which is a conversation between an Indian prince named Arjuna and his master, otherwise assumed to be God. And the two of them are not speaking on some green hilltop or in a calm classroom. They're urgently talking to each other just before the prince is forced into a bloody battle he does not wish to fight. And isn't that life for all of us? Uh, the urgency of the battle is what uh, uh, draws us uh, here and now uh, so powerfully to this dialogue because, you know, we're all facing our little battles, as it were, uh, in life. Career, parenting, a spiritual search, these are all fraught with uh, challenges and difficulties. The Gita says only the person who knows one's own true inner self knows true happiness. Uh, the goal here, which is the goal of meditation in general, is to go beyond our thoughts and our intellect and our memories. Uh, Gita invites us to go beyond this, the thoughts and, and even the emotions. Bentwich's translation of the Bhagavad Gita, which means the divine song, consists of 12 chapters and three parts. Those three parts focus on the path of action, the path of devotion, and the path of wisdom. Path of action, which is where we start. How do we act in the world? Uh, how do we go tomorrow to the grocery? How do we deal with our next domestic or work uh, problem? How do we live life, in other words, uh, such that every day does not end uh, with us feeling more uh, worn out, but more elevated? One of the things that's so striking about the Gita is its timeless ability to translate to modern day questions. Some of the world's most significant luminaries, scientists, quantum physicists, poets and musicians have been inspired by it. The Gita deals with the very structure of the universe and consciousness and who we really are. As quantum physics helps us realize, it seems as though I am separate than you. In reality, you know, it's a bunch of a soup of atoms and subatomic particles, and there's a unity uh, underlying it. This is the unity that the Gita uh, describes. One of my own favorite passages of the Gita has to do with death. You speak words of wisdom, O Prince, but your sorrow is in vain. For the truly wise never mourn, neither the living nor the slain. There was never a time we were not, me or you or these enemy kings, nor can there be any future in which we ever cease being. The unity that unites us all is everywhere, all around us, in our connection, in our cellular structures, in our internal beauty. And so the beauty in the world uh, is always around us. Uh, it is we that are sometimes uh, open to see it and, uh, and experience it uh, ecstatically, oftentimes regretfully uh, are blind uh, to it uh, throughout the day. That's where the true beauty is, uh, and it's always there. That was Dr. Isaac Bentwich speaking about his new book, Gita, a new perspective on an ancient manuscript which has helped millions transform challenges into opportunities for inner growth. I'm Heather McElhatton, and this is A Beautiful World. NPR News. Brought to you with help from the Polad Family Foundation.